Hello everybody and welcome to my poly tunnel. So it is a Monday morning and you can probably hear the rain. It is very, very rainy today. We've had a horrible storm that went on for pretty much a week here in Northern Ireland. We're right at the North Coast, so we really feel any storms quite strongly here. But today it's so much warmer. It's just raining, so that's fine. So I have been inspired to get going with my seed sowing. So I have my little packet of seeds that I need to sow this month. I've got a whole combination of things in here. I've got broad beans, obviously, they need to be sown now. I've got oriental salad, uh, baby leaf salad, uh, radishes, kohlrabi, pak choy, um, lots of delicious um, things that I'll be planting actually out in the polytunnel. And these will be um, our hunger gap filler. So I'm really, really excited to get going. This is the first sowing of the season. So, I mean, it feels really momentous, really exciting. It feels now that maybe spring is here. Um, it feels like winter's just been hanging on so long this year. And um, this is just such a big moment in my life because it really, I mean, it's the beginning of the busy season for us here at the farm. It'll be seed sowing now constantly throughout spring and summer. And also then we'll be planting out and out onto not only the polytunnels, but out onto our acre or over acre veg field. So it's really intense now, it's gonna be full on, um, but I'm really, really excited. Um, so yeah, um, in this polytunnel, I already have crops gro growing. I've got um, leaf beet, pak choy over here. Um, I've got ishikura planted next, then some rocket, some salad, some oriental leaf, um, and then there's a little bit of parsley growing at the back. So, I mean, this isn't a great spread of greens, but it really is at least something to get us going over this time when the veg fields are starting to slow down. We're not in the hunger gap yet, so there is still lots of things like kale um, growing out in the field, which is fantastic and so delicious. And we also have our purple sprouting broccoli growing as well outside, which is amazing and such a treat at this time of year. And we do two varieties of purple sprouting broccoli, so um, that should keep us going through the hunger gap, I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Um, but yes, now it's so important to get sowing the next um, seeds for the year. So I have got my setup over here. It is a complete tip because we have our chickens in the other polytunnel at the moment because they all have to be kept inside. So everything is just so cluttered. And I haven't really looked at this space since um, September, October last year. So I really do need to tidy this up, see what else we need to get. Um, I think I'm missing some plant labels and things like that. Um, so yes, I definitely need to work on tidying up. Um, but, um, and yes, I have loads of canes and things like that down here <laughs> that were holding up the board beams that have all been pulled up but yes it's so it's such a mess i also need to do some weeding because i can see that uh, the chickweed is starting to come up um so i'm going to weed that as well if i've got time but here's a tip chickweed is actually delicious uh whizzed up as a pesto with loads of parmesan and garlic really really tasty and really highly nutritious it's one of my favorite spring herbs so I'm going to quickly show you what seeds I'm going to be sowing and what kind of pots I'm going to be putting each in um, and how I organize myself. Now, my organization is pretty basic. It's nothing special. It's messy, you know, but it does work. So I'm going to show it to you because I've been doing this kind of um, seed sowing records and things like that since I think 2018. So a few years now and it does work and it's really handy. So I'll show you that and then I'm going to get sowing. Okay, so I've got my seeds here. I've got my little list of things I want to accomplish today. But this is the diary that I use to keep all my notes. And it's a lovely diary, actually. It's really beautiful, make a great gift. Um, and basically it's got each month and then it has like a few tips for planting. I don't really use it that way. I just use it as a notebook. So um, you can see here, this is 2018. Um, 2019 all the things that we sewed and then any notes and um, so this is quite handy when I'm looking back so if I go to yeah 2020 I can see what I grew at this time last year broad beans ratio Eleonora and then some 
of the salads and then I make notes so it says again in March for outside so it's a good reminder for me to do that um, what I grew on the 17th so lots of cabbages and onions but I do know there's a note here saying red baron and stir on onions need heat better grown in late March the February sowings didn't germinate and this is very true I remember this happening last year um, the red baron needs more heat the stir on not so much so this year I'm going to grow red baron in late March and stir on in March so I won't be doing those in February um, there was cauliflower celeriac and tomatoes at the end of February uh, the tomatoes are for the polytunnel the cauliflowers would have all been for outside as would have the celeriac so I mean it gives me a really good note of what to start doing this year the truth is I do forget so you know 12 months um, have passed and I have forgotten what I was doing last year so this is very very handy okay so that's my diary that I keep all my notes in so I always bring down a pen as well and then here I've got my notes for today so I know that I'm going to be doing one tray with rocket, baby leaf and oriental and this is the amount of seeds I'll probably put into each module so three seeds of oriental, three seeds of baby leaf and three seeds of rocket and this is actually the tray I'm going to be using for that, it's quite big and it's got lovely deep modules. Then I'm doing the same thing, one whole tray with a mix of radish, three seeds each, turnip, the flat white variety, three seeds each and kohlrabi, the purple variety with one seed. And so that will be again in one whole tray. And then I'm gonna do a mixed tray of pak choy and ishikura. The ishikura is a young spring onion, which is absolutely delicious. We started to grow it last year and it was amazing. I highly recommend it. You can use the greens, you can obviously use the white bit. It's really, really good. And it does, it's pretty hardy in the polytunnel and it did survive through hot weather as well. So I'm very fond of this variety. I'm gonna do three seeds in one module and one seed of the pak choy. And then of course broad beans and for broad beans i'll be using larger trays like these kind of ones um we just reuse these i think are from a you know reuse from something we bought from the garden center so i'll just yeah i'll just use um anything like that something a bit bigger because broad bean seedlings are pretty big so we'll need something like that so that is my jobs for today this is what i have all my seeds in this is a photo holder um, I'll show you my whole setup for storing seeds later if you want. Um, just let me know in the comments. I can do another video on it. But I've got all my seeds that I would like to sow. So I've actually got so cosmos and sweet peas um, here. So that's flower seeds. And then everything else is in here. So I've got my radishes. These are my broad beans. Some of the varieties are different this year because, I mean, with Brexit, we just had to take what we could find. Um, there's a picking mix of lettuce, there's oriental, um, oriental greens, another oriental mix. I do love Tama Organics, but we couldn't get from them this year, so these are last year's seeds. This is this year's seeds from Germany. Um, got some mixed leaves, these are my salad onions, I love those. More radish, some wild rocket, salad rocket, pak choy. And this is the kohlrabi that we really like. This is the Azure Star and it does pretty well in the polytunnel. It does need to be so now. And if there's too much heat, it will bolt. So bear that in mind, depending on your climate. Um, and it's the same with the Oriental. This is a good early salad leaf, um, but you know, with any heat, this will bolt. So you just need to bear that in mind. Same with pak choy. Um, but I'm hoping that if I plant them now, I will get, um, a little bit of harvesting from them before it gets too hot so that's my plan with that the um the broad beans are something that you know they grow really well inside these will start um producing pods in early summer for us so it'll be like end of may beginning of june um all through june july we get um broad beans they're delicious we've done them for so many years now and they work well i do sometimes plant these outside but they're always I mean they always I guess a bit tired outside because we live in a windy climate and a much colder climate than for example the south of England where they would really flourish outside ours really do need a polytunnel so that is all the seeds and I'm gonna go and get sewing now okay so I'm sitting here with my tray and I'm ready to get sewing I'm gonna start with the tray of rocket baby leaf and um, oriental mix this one here has bigella 
which is a green oak leaf, Pyro, which is a crisp green oak leaf, and Red Salad Bowl, which is a red oak leaf. Um, so that's a nice little mix. This is from the brand Demeter. I've also got this packet, which has some seeds left. It's the Tama Organics Mixed Leaves. This is quite similar to the picking mix, um, but from my memory, it does have, um, I think it has got more of a classic cut and come again, um, like a baby leaf as opposed to the oak leaf. Um, so I might plant both of these because I, I'm really fond of the Tama Organic variety. I just can't get any because of Brexit this year. So um, we're going with Demeter this year. Then I'm gonna go for an Oriental mixed salad. And I'm gonna go for Salad Rocket. This is our packet from last year. If I can, I try and use up the seeds that I purchased that year in that year. So the seeds are really fresh when I buy them again the following year, if that makes sense. Um, I think with seeds, really you want to use them within two years max. Um, but um, this Salad Rocket from last year will be fine. So I'll use that. Um, yeah, so I've got all the rest of my seeds in this lovely little plastic photo case. This is so handy because on rainy days, I don't have to worry about the seeds getting damp. Um, and if I do forget to bring these seeds home and they stay out in the polytunnel, it's not the end of the world because they're all sealed in and they don't get damp and, and destroy the seeds. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna get some compost into my tray. Now, if you want to start sowing seeds, but you've got um, a much smaller garden, then you just need to use um, a smaller tray so you could use something like this and uh, plant out less of the seeds of in general though it is nice to it is nice to plant out um, a bit more than you're going to need because what happens then is if some of the seeds are no good and they don't germinate or if you get pest damage then it's not the end of the world because you still have extra seedlings that you can use so just bear that in mind so yeah I'm going to fill this up now and uh, get sewing the first sewing of the year <laughs> As you can see, I've filled up the tray with the compost. What I like to do now is take a second tray, place it on top, and I push this down a bit. And then I top this back up with more uh, compost. now is get my fingers I use three at a time and I push them into the compost like this and what that does is it creates a nice deep hole for me to plant my seeds in um, and then I just cover them back over with more compost nice and simple okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plant I'm gonna sow out my seeds so these are my rocket seeds they all look beautiful ready to go into the soil and um, start on this side here I'm gonna try and get three seeds per hole here it's easier said than done because the seeds are obviously tiny um, and my fingers are cold but I'm gonna try my best um, you can sow one seed if you want but I think with things like rocket it's actually better when you multi sow them um, just because they're such small little plants and actually they they are quite happy to be planted out in a little bunch of three it does them no harm and because with rocket you end up sort of cutting it back anyway um, when you harvest it. I find this just gives a better harvest. Well, I'm actually doing quite good getting three in. I wasn't sure my fingers were gonna cope, but I get, um, is it called Raynards on my fingers where the circulation cuts off from the tips of the fingers. It's actually really horrible. Um, because I've got an autoimmune condition, I do get that and it's horrible. Um, but I do have amazing gardening gloves, which I adore. They're these, um, Sky Tech gloves, the Sky Tech Argan, they're amazing. They're waterproof and they're thermal. And I wear those throughout my day when I'm going about farm chores and that kind of thing. Um, but unfortunately, when it comes to sewing, you have to get your fingers out. So, <laughs> but I think my fingers are doing good. Yeah. So I just have to bear this in mind. I wanna do a third. So I think we're gonna go, yeah, I think I'll probably go as far as there. 
walking away doing this kind of job, I do love to listen to a good podcast because you do have to sort of really slow yourself down and become quite meditative um, when you're doing this, which is good. It's actually a really good um, way of keeping healthy in the mind, I think. Gardening is a very good thing to do for the soul. And I mean, there is nothing like connecting back with the soil, with the seeds, watching them germinate. I mean, this is to me what life is all about. I um, couldn't be happier than when I'm down in my polytunnel, the sound of the rain. Um, I mean, it's just lovely. Also, I'm particularly happy today because the children are being babysat. So um, I'm feeling very, very happy today. <laughs> okay, so I think I have got enough of my rocket done. So I just put the rest back in my seed pocket and I'll try and get this and I think and then of course I'm going to label as I go I need to buy more of these um, labels because we're all out but I've got a few to tide me over so I'm just going to write um, what I've sown sometimes I will write the variety especially if it's um, in the case of the broad beans or the tomatoes obviously it's really key to write the varieties and then I always put the date that I sowed that's really important as well especially with, if you're successionally sowing um, or you've got lots and lots of seedlings, it's really good to know what date you sowed them on. And then also, if you find things haven't come up, if you look back on your date, you'll know that, oh, actually, I've only sowed, I only sowed that two weeks ago. It needs a longer germination time or it might give you an indicator that actually your seeds are dead. So I'm going to just fill that out now and pop it into my tree. Okay, so I filled it out. I almost wrote, wrote 2017, which is ridiculous because it's 2021. <laughs> um, you know what I was thinking. So, on to the next bit of the tray. I'm in the center part now. And I'm going to go for my, I think I'm going to go for Oriental Mix. So I'm gonna get that in. And then when I've done that, I will put in the um, baby leaf. And then I will see you in a bit. Okay, so I have finished up my tray. I have topped it up with tom compost again, so all the seeds are snuggled into their new bed. It has also stopped raining, which is fantastic, so you can probably hear me better now. Um, I'm going to water these in now. I'm gonna give them a nice sprinkling with water, get them really well saturated, and then I'm going to place them down the center of my polytunnel. Now, usually I would put these um, trays of seedlings, trays of seeds um, on top of tables off the ground because the ground can be quite cold but um, I have to wait for my husband to bring down our seedling tables which are somewhere on the farm I have no idea um, so for now I'm just going to place them on the floor but I will be getting them off the floor very very quickly so just bear that in mind it's still very very cold at the moment so you will want to place your seedlings off the ground somewhere nice and warm um, so all your seeds can germinate and the seedlings can get really nice big and healthy okay so now it's time to move on to our broad beans now the broad beans are slightly different in that you need to plant them in bigger pots and also nice and deep modules as you can see here because broad beans will have um, bigger root systems they're a much bigger uh, seedling than something like an oriental salad seedling now with broad beans they like to be sown about two inches deep in the soil um, and I'm only going to be planting one seed per um, module here so I'm going to grab my little box again and find my um, broad beans right so these are my broad beans they are the hang down variety everything is in German um, on this packet <laughs> um, because we had to buy them from Germany this year because of Brexit now I don't know how many seeds are in this packet 25 which I think will be enough. I mean, I've got three, six, nine, ten. So nine times three is 27, I think. Um, so I think I, I sowed a lot more last year. I can't quite remember. This is why taking notes is so important because at the time you think you'll remember and, uh, well, I don't anyway, I never remember. 
because the year is quite long and you know we plant so many plants plants out veg plants out that I do just forget so taking notes as you go is so handy and I'm definitely gonna try and be better this year with it now these are my board bean seeds as you can see they look just like broad beans that you would eat but all nice and dry and shriveled up and I'm gonna put them into the pot now this is quite a fun thing to plant with kids because the seeds are really nice and big and chunky and they can really see that it looks like a broad bean so it's a fun one to do with your kids but I don't have my kids here today so I can just get them all done on my own which I'm not complaining about if I have some extras I might take some to do with the boys later kids love watching seeds being sown and watching them germinate and it's so fantastic for them to learn how to do this as well um, so if you do have the time I do recommend getting your kids involved where you can it's, it's difficult for us because this is our livelihood as well and I mean we are on quite tight deadlines to get things done so I mean it's always for me it's always trying to get the balance right between um, enjoying what I'm doing and including my children my two young children but also getting the jobs done because I mean it's it's food's got to be sown and planted and grown and harvested um, for our customers so it's getting getting the balance right so I'm gonna need a bit more compost just to top up my trees so they're looking good now okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to label these I'll have to label each separate one because I've got three of these and I think I can get another at least another one of these um, out of that packet so that's fantastic and um, so I'll get that done and then I'll be back my board beans are now done I'm flying along this morning which is fantastic and it is time to get out our next seedlings so this tray that I've got set up here you can't really see but I've just got another large tray um, I'm going to put in radish the variety I'm using is radish rosa which we've used many a year here um, I'm going to use oh the other one I do like is radish rudy um, I'm going to put in turnips I'm going to put in my kohlrabi azure star um, and I just realized I don't have my turnips with me no um, so that's a bit frustrating so I think in this trade then I'll do radish kohlrabi and I'll put my pak choy as well um, and get that in I wasn't as organized as I thought. <laughs> so then I'll do the flat white turnips and I'll do my Ishikura then another day, that's no problem. And then I can get my radish, my pak choy and my kohlrabi um, done into this large tray here. Again, I'm just dividing this tray up into three each of the modules. I'll be planting a couple of radish, um, one pak choy seed and one kohlrabi seed. So I'm going to get going with this now. I'll just tilt the camera down for you so you can see. There we go. Okay, let's start with kohlrabi. It feels so good to be sewing again. It really, really does. Um, it's, it's almost quite surreal in a funny old way. Okay, so apparently we have 60 seeds in here, but I mean, it doesn't look like 60 seeds, but that is the kohlrabi seeds there, the lovely little round, um, lovely dark brown seeds. So let's get going. So I have to go a lot slower when I'm just doing one small seed in each module because I have to just concentrate a little bit more to make sure I get them in. These kohlrabi 
always do really well in the polytunnel and they do kind of fill in that hunger gap time for us quite well. Um, but it is so um, year dependent because last year we had that incredibly hot late spring which completely destroyed a lot of our um, spring sowings. Um, so, I mean, you've just got to really be aware that, you know, sometimes things are out of your control a bit. But in general, our weather here tends to be cooler um slower to get going so i kind of work within that parameter but you know you can do the same thing yourself depending on what your climate is um because not everybody is going to be you know planting pak choy and things like that right now i mean it just depends and also again for polytunnel sowing um it's it's slightly different to outsourcing. So I'm sort of doing a combination of both where I'm sewing for the polytunnel and I'm also sewing for the veg plot outside. Now, I'm almost done. I've got a few seeds left actually, so it's not too bad. It's definitely enough for the polytunnel. But I do need to check to see if we'll have enough to go outside because we plant this on quite a big scale out in the field as well. So yeah, that is my kohlrabi done. So I'm just going to mark that, I think I've got as far as there, no, I've got as far as there, there we go. Um, I will do some radish next. The radish are perfect for sowing in spring because they like the slightly cooler temperature and they germinate really quickly, again a great one to do with kids and I do love radish, they are fantastic. They're nice to sow successionally as well, so you get um, a nice um, crop that comes over a course of weeks as opposed to all in one day, which can happen with radish. Um, and yeah, the, the minute the weather gets hot, you'll find that your radish will start bolting or get really, really hot, which isn't ideal. I mean, some people don't mind it being really hot and spicy. I don't really, but I mean, it's not how radish really should be to be perfect. So this is a nice little crop that I know will do really well. Um, I think I'm gonna do two seeds. I find like, I mean, for a perfect little round radish, I would do one seed per module, but you can also multi-sow them um, like I'm doing here and you get slightly different shape on the radish, maybe not so perfectly round, but you do get two healthy radish plants and sometimes that can be just the ticket. For us, that's fine. We're not trying to grow show vegetables, but rather just vegetables for our customers and ourselves. Um, another nice thing about radish is you can eat their greens, you can eat their tops. I mean, it's a great little, great little veg to grow now, great veg to cover the hunger gap. I'm a big fan of it. Okay, and then finally, I'm going in with my pak choy. Wait, I'm gonna try and get one seed in because this is a little bulbing plant. It has that lovely gathering of leaves and that sort of bulb-like formation. So this isn't gonna to be too happy if I multi-sow it. It's not gonna like that. So one seed in. When I started sowing, years ago now, <laughs> um, I would be so slow at sewing. It took me so long. Now I can get the trays done so quickly because it becomes like second nature once you get going. And I love that with gardening, every year you learn something. The mistakes are just as valuable as the wins. You do need some wins to keep you going, but failures are not to be, um, a worry and I think people find that they fail at certain things with gardening and then they label themselves as you know oh I know I kill every plant that I touch but I think that is so untrue I think I think gardening really is for everybody and I think it is actually really foolproof especially with I mean veg growing I think to a certain degree is quite um, foolproof certain flowers are obviously you know a little bit trickier but you know I've always just liked that attitude of getting on with it and not being about gardening um, 
I do think it is for everybody and I mean it's it's not like I said it's not rocket science <laughs> there's some people would lead, lead you to believe it is but it's not <laughs> okay so you can't really see what I'm doing but I'm just topping up with compost let's tip this down a bit you can have a look that's just making sure all my seeds are covered I mean again they're all tucked in looking snug right so I just need to get my labels written up now um, and then I think I'm finished okay so you can see behind me that's my seed trays there and I've just given them a good water in and that is that's me done that's my first sowing um, of February I feel really excited I can hear the birds singing now the rain stopped it really does feel so spring like and it's also not very cold today it's just lovely um, so I'm just gonna sit down now and I'm gonna fill in that diary with the dates um, and what I planted and all that kind of thing and yeah that's me done I'm gonna go grab my children now and uh, probably go and get a cup of tea I think it's well deserved um, but yeah I hope this has inspired you to get into a garden and start sewing if you've got any questions let me know um, in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them all and yeah I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are and I will see you soon in another video bye